Good afternoon on today's Angry Bulletin. Hope I got your attention there. Just a few short months after my visit to the Saxavord spaceport in the fall of 2022, when all they had was a few concrete pads that had yet to cure properly, two German launch providers have been testing their engines at the facility and are poised to go to space. One, a suborbital launch taking place in less than two months, and the other heading to orbit, hopefully by the end of this year. And on this side of the Atlantic, Boeing has just reported record losses with the Starliner spacecraft, a vehicle that seems to have no end to the challenges, the snafus, the slip-ups, the technical problems that delay the advent of this spacecraft. And now, being $1.5 billion in the red, how can Boeing possibly make a profit on this spacecraft? And given the fact that more work is needed and additional expense, how can Boeing possibly make this thing safe without losing their shirts in the process? All of this and more coming at you on The Angry Astronaut right now. Good afternoon and once again, welcome to The Angry Astronaut. When I visited the UK um, late last year, I had an opportunity to tour the Saxavord spaceport. I wasn't actually planning on doing that, but I met some representatives from Saxavord at a convention uh, near London and had an opportunity to talk to them extensively about their plans. Pretty amazing stuff happening up in Saxavord, and we're talking about 25 five launches per year from this spaceport. An incredible launch cadence from a small spaceport on the remote Isles of Shetland. Very, very difficult to believe that something like this is going to happen, but it's true. And the development that's happened, the progress that's taken place over such a short period of time is frankly mind boggling. And if everything goes to plan, Germany will be launching their first rocket. Indeed, the first rocket that's ever been launched from the UK later this year. And when I say first rocket, I mean first vertical rocket that's heading to space. Up to this point, the most powerful rocket that's ever been launched in the UK, and it didn't make it to space, was when Top Gear launched a Reliant Robin from a UK military test grounds, and it only got a few thousand feet up into the air before it plummeted to its doom. But we're not here to talk about Reliant Robins and crazy stunts. We're here to talk about serious space flight. This is all the progress that had been made at the time of my visit back in October of 2022. As you can see, it was a lot of concrete paths, a lot of dirt being dug up. There had been a little bit more progress made at the time of my visit, but not much. Really, all it was was a lot of CGI overlaid upon the most beautiful chain of islands that I have ever had the privilege to visit. Well, Iceland might be an exception to that, but really, Shetland is just achingly beautiful. But here is the same facility right now, only about nine months later. Rocket Factory Augsburg out of Munich has made enormous progress, having already completed their launch pad. And if everything goes according to plan, they will be sending up their first RFA-1 rocket in the next few months. They totally expect it to blow up, and by the way, so does Saxavord. They're waiting for some fiery entertainment in the North Sea later this year, but nevertheless, the RFA-1 rocket has some amazing potential. We're talking 1.3 metric tons to sun-synchronous orbit, or quadruple the capability of the Electron from Rocket Lab, 850 kilograms up to a polar orbit, 500 kilograms to MEO, 450 kilograms to GTO, 300 kilograms to the moon. And by the way, what you're looking at right now is the integration facility that Saxavord is building for their customers as well. And they also intend to provide the ground crews and also the fueling services and testing facilities for these companies should they wish to take advantage of them. And High Impulse, another German company, has been doing just 
just that. High Impulse is planning to send up a suborbital rocket in October of this year. If all goes well, I will be there in person to report on that. If you'd like to support that endeavor, by the way, everything's in the description as to how to support my content. But nevertheless, I think it's going to be an amazing experience to watch a rocket take off from this achingly beautiful location. On a side note, during their construction work, it was discovered that a Bronze Age civilization had established some sort of encampment on this very peninsula. It's amazing for me to think that a primitive civilization over 2,000 years ago, without even 18th century ships or navigation at their disposal, had decided to brave the North Sea, travel hundreds of kilometers up to these remote and very inhospitable islands purely for the goal of finding a new home for themselves. If people way back then could take these kinds of chances to establish a new home in a place this difficult to live in, especially if you don't have modern heating and modern shelter at your disposal, well, it gives us a sense of enthusiasm, I think, and inspiration for finding a new home elsewhere in the solar system. Okay, let's move on to the topic that I think most of you tuned into this episode for, and that is the current state of Boeing Starliner. First of all, Boeing snafus in 60 seconds. Number one, Boeing launched their first unmanned test of the Starliner vehicle back in 2019. When I was first starting my channel, they had over 80 corrective actions that they needed to take after a series of problems hit the vehicle, and that delayed everything for a very considerable amount of time. Then when they were ready to go again in 2021, the valves on the vehicle stuck and they were unable to launch. Finally, in 2022, they finally managed to get the thing off the ground again. But lo and behold, more valve problems, problems with the parachutes, problems with the thrusters. NASA tried to downplay those issues and planned for a launch in July of this year. However, finally, some outside whistleblowers independent auditors, that is, who determined that there were still serious technical problems with the spacecraft, went public with the whole thing, and NASA and Boeing were forced to back off. And at this point, Boeing has finally announced that they are over one and a half billion dollars in the hole and counting. So given the fact that there is no way they're going to make up that one and a half billion dollars, how the hell can we expect Boeing to possibly make this thing safe? Every modification, every fix, every corrective action is going to put them even further in the hole. And when you're already running one and a half billion dollars behind, well, to say that this project has become a millstone around Boeing's neck would be the understatement of the century, because there's no way Boeing can get out from underneath this unless they cancel the program entirely, which is something I've been advocating for for a very long period of time. Time. Keep in mind that this is a fixed price contract. NASA is not going to give Boeing another dime for this program, especially given the fact that they awarded Boeing more than a billion dollars more than SpaceX got for Crew Dragon. They don't need any more money, but regardless of what they should need, Boeing has been unable to make this into a reliable and safe spacecraft. And as I said, with every dime they spend, they go further into the red and the more other programs programs at Boeing have to pay for this shortfall. It's going to have an impact on the entire company, and they're going to cut corners every way they possibly can. Would you really want to be one of the first two astronauts to fly on this thing? And there's a couple other factors to consider as well. Once again, to reiterate, it is impossible for Boeing to make up this one and a half billion dollars. Simply impossible. Even though they are charging 90 million dollars per seat to fly up to the ISS, which is tens of millions more than SpaceX is charging, and even five million dollars more per seat than the Russians used to charge for the Soyuz, Boeing simply cannot make up one and a half 
$100 billion with the few remaining flights they have left going to the ISS, and nobody else is going to make use of this spacecraft. Nobody. It's more expensive than any other solution, including the Sierra Space Dream Chaser, and it offers no advantages whatsoever. It carries less cargo than either Dragon or the Dream Chaser. And it's also important to note that nobody really had a lot of confidence in the safety of this spacecraft to begin with. Do you notice the extremely shallow trajectory of the Atlas V that's carrying this thing? That trajectory is not by accident, nor is it the same trajectory that SpaceX uses for the Crew Dragon. SpaceX flies in a far more vertical trajectory that takes them to orbit much more swiftly. However, as you can see, ULA and probably Boeing are not tremendously confident that this thing is going to be safe during ascent. Therefore, this trajectory allows the spacecraft to abort and splash down off the coast of Portugal a lot more easily. You can also see right here an aerodynamic skirt on the Centaur upper stage. That's not there by accident either. It's there because the Starliner is not a very aerodynamic vehicle, and it requires this aerodynamic skirt in order to give it the stability necessary to make it at least relatively safe. That was not built into the original design, by the way. It was added later on when it was determined that Starliner could not fly through the air safely. With all of these problems that existed before this spacecraft ever took flight, and adding on all of the other new problems that have developed recently, plus the fact that this is running so far in the red already, and Boeing is strongly disincented to spend any more money on it, cancellation is the only responsible alternative. Mark your calendars. On August 12th, I will be giving my first lecture of my North America tour in Polk City, Florida. I am selling tickets right now. There are 96 seats available. Well, actually less than that now. Several seats got sold yesterday. And in addition to that, we are selling them for only $10 ahead of time, $15 at the door. And that includes a free digital copy of my book. Can't really get a much better deal than that. And it will support the rest of the stops on my tour the more people I have attending the event. Once again, Polk City, Florida, which is located close to Orlando, Tampa, and not too far away from Titusville and Cape Canaveral as well, on the 12th of August at 2 p.m. All of the details are in the description as to how to get your tickets. I would prefer PayPal or Patreon at this stage rather than GoFundMe, but any way you want to do it is fine by me. Just make sure to send me an email so I can send you a ticket and a digital copy of my book when it's completed, which should be in the next one to two weeks if everything goes according to plan. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, please subscribe. Very important to the success of this channel, and as always, Ways. Stay angry about space.